Good evening. It's a real pleasure to see all these faces out here and speak to you. I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to ask you, how many people have been to the Rhode Island Democratic Party's website in the past, say, three months and looked at it? A lot of you. Well, I went to it today, and I read that on the first paragraph of the homepage, it reads that Rhode Island Democrats champion progressive values and ideas for all. So if you got a call in the past few days mimicking what my predecessors have said, that I was some kind of a progressive boogie, progressive boogie woman that was going to throw the economy into a tailspin and make this whole state of Rhode Island flip upside down, I want to tell you that that was not true, because that's not who I am. Why am I running? I decided to run for this executive board, this executive committee, in July. It wasn't last week. It wasn't last month. It was long before many other things have occurred politically in this state, including the November elections. And I decided to run when I learned that a Democratic woman incumbent was, endor was not endorsed, but a Trump voting independent candidate was. I was extremely disturbed about that. I drew the line on that, and I said that I had to do something to become more active in this party. I'm sure that by now, some of you, maybe most of you, have received my letter in the mail, and you've learned a little bit about me. And I'm sorry that I only have two minutes up here to really have you get to know me. I would like to really have you spend more time getting to know me. Three minutes, three minutes. I was disappointed that I wasn't able to call you or email you because the challengers were not given access to that information about the voting delegates. So why do I really want to be vice chair? Because I was a founding co-chair of the Women's Caucus, I had a peek under the covers of this organization. And I'm not running against Grace Diaz. Let me be perfectly clear about that. As I told her in the elevator the other day, I'm running for this party. I'm running for a party that will be revitalized and will revitalize its bylaws. This is time that we took a look at those. I want to have a serious conversation about term limits for officers, because it seems as though people have to die before an officer's seat opens up. I want to have a party that goes to the far ends of this very small state and really engages voters. I live on Aquidneck Island. I live in Newport. The party is very never seen down there. There's no support for candidates down there. Everybody's busy in the Providence metro area. And if I'm elected, I will go to every town to every town committee meeting. I'd like to see a woman from the Women's Caucus have a seat on this executive committee. It's time that women are here. I'd also like to quote my dear friend, who I don't see her tonight, Aaron Regenberg, who said that this party needs unity. Both the left and the right are frustrated. There's a very small middle that gets pushed around from side to side. And I would challenge this elected board this evening, when they go back to work next month, to launch a real unity campaign for this party. Because sitting here one night, one evening, is not really going to do it. I want to just say that I want to apologize to my House colleagues because I know that for some of them this is a difficult vote. It's a Sophie's choice. I know that it's difficult to choose between us. And sometimes there's political risks with that. I want to thank Representative Fogarty. I want to thank Steve Sabo from my district committee for nominating me this evening. And I want to wish the best of luck to all the candidates this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Representative Cox.